Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, AP World History teacher whose name is Mr. Brock. Um, I've got lots of awesome stuff to share with you today. Uh, and uh, up on the screen, you can probably see um, that uh, we're going to talk about Unit 1. Better. Yeah. Okay. So, um, what you need to know is there's a really cool website called getafive.com. G E T A F I V E.com. It's free. Sign up for it and get all sorts of uh, cool review videos with some hunky dude in a blue polo. And uh, he has a really big Adam's apple. Uh, he does. Sorry. I mean, it's not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. It's just the truth. Um, and uh, you can listen to him and stare at him longingly um, uh, while he tells you all about uh, uh, everything that's ever happened in world history. Um, apparently that, uh, that, that comment about the Adam's a Apple guy uh, has shaken part of the coolest kids at Rock House County High School who have decided to come in uh, after school and do this review session with your boy. Um, so if you're watching this, you're probably on youtube.com slash mrbrockdotnet. Um, I have 16 subscribers now, uh, going for that big milestone of 20, so make sure you smash that uh, subscribe uh, button. Um, other than that, um, uh, donate to my Patreon, and uh, please try not to swear in my Christian Minecraft server. Now, um, so today uh, we're going to be doing these videos based on Get a Five, uh, and this is the smallest unit, the shortest unit. Uh, it counts for the least on the test, um, and uh, and yeah. So we're talking about the 20, 2019 AP exam here, um, and so if you're studying for that, good luck. Um, we're going to talk about this time period, 800 BCE uh, to 600. BCE. Uh, BCE is before Common Era. Uh, CE is Common Era, and uh, uh, it's all based on your boy Jesus. Jesus was born in the year one, according to this chart or thing, but actually it was probably a different time. So um, we start with the Neolithic Revolution. Another name for the Neolithic Revolution is the... Agricultural Revolution, said one of 17 students. And so, yeah, it's the Agricultural Revolution. It's when people began to farm on a wide, wider scale, a broader scale. Uh, and then they start to write things down. That's why world history starts now. And prehistory is some other class that I'm sure AP will offer later on. And you guys can all complain about how you didn't take AP prehistory. Um first human-like creature is Lucy. Um, that wasn't her original name. It was probably something like, because her, uh, it's true, her vocal cords were probably not developed uh, as well. And so, was, uh, was the first human-like creature. Um, we call Lucy, we call her Lucy because it's a lot cooler, like the, the T-Rex at the Chicago Museum we call Sue. Uh, that's just what we do. Um, but, uh, the uh, binomial nomenclature uh, for, um, for Lucy is Australopithecines. Uh, Austra means southern, uh, Lopithecines or something like that means ape. Southern ape is uh, Lucy. And uh, just if you're wondering what your binomial nomenclature is, is uh, Homo sapiens. That's you. So, well, most of you. Um, so out of Africa, this is the first of uh, uh, twice uh, uh, people are going to be, uh, actually, sadly, three times we can use the phrase out of Africa to describe an event that's happening. Um, uh, first, uh, and this is the one that actual, like, scholarly people who don't try to pronounce Lucy's name like, blah, um, that they they would call this out of Africa, and and what that is is uh, uh, it's called it's called the peopling of the earth. Uh, we all start in Africa, 
And by we, I mean human beings. I don't mean white people or black people or brown people. I mean people. Mm. Uh, and so we all start there, and we start walking. Um, a better teacher would have a map coming up, but I got a feeling he's not a better teacher. So he'll get online and grab one here in a second. Uh, real quick, if you'd like a preview, uh, there's going to be two more times I talk about out of Africa in AP World History. Uh, the second time is uh, the forced uh, uh, the for the forced diaspora of African slaves in the transatlantic slave trade, um, and so that's kind of a a sadder, more tragic uh, time uh, that we can apply out of Africa uh, to a process. And then there's kind of a sort of triumphant out of Africa that um, happens in uh, period six, uh, which is uh, when all the colonizers are kicked out of Africa. Um, and so we have those three separate times. Uh, all the hustling and bustling is apparently I've offended half the class and they're leaving. Um, either that or their mom has to pick them up. And uh, so uh, a really quick out of Africa map for you. Uh, out of Africa map. Oh, apparently there's a movie called Out of Africa. Um, out of Africa is cool because you will get to see all sorts of cool land bridges and the like. And of course it won't show up right because everything on the planet hates me, including this thing. That one is even smaller. This is terrible. Site can't be reached. Oh my god, I'm floundering online. Here's what you need to know. First human beings are right here. The first homo sapiens are right here, roughly Ethiopia. Okay, why is Ethiopia awesome? It's because all of our ancestors are from Ethiopia and they kicked the, uh, the Italians' butts in period five, which is so fun. Um, and so you can see as people start to move, um, Ah, oh, there's one called the tracking the Y chromosome. I think it. And he misspelled chromosome, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, so basically over time, you see uh, the Y chromosome move all over uh, Earth. And uh, you can see, I know it's blurry. I'm so sorry it's blurry. Uh, but we have human beings moving all over the world. Um, this is, of course, pre, uh, pre-history. This is before people were writing things down. This is before um, 8000 BCE. And we have, um, we see this happening, um, uh, the land bridge that you've heard about, um, and, but the origin. That's the thing I wanted to point out to you guys. Um, so that's kind of uh, where we are. Uh, the class period, though, uh, remember, the entire class is 10,000 years, 8,000 BCE to 2019. So 10,000 uh, and 19 years. Um, but all this stuff, this is prehistory, right? Uh, this is before people started writing stuff down. People start writing stuff down in about 8,000 uh, BCE. Uh, so, um, civilization, uh, we talked about quite a great deal, um, leads to, um, well, comes from farming. Is There are problems uh, with even uh, the word civilization. What does it mean to be civilized uh, throughout most of his, um, most modern history? Um, uh, it is, it has meant to be European and white and Christian and middle class, uh, male, those are the civilized uh, people. Um, but what we see, uh, and Karl Marx will talk about this in period five, um, for all my communists in the room, um, I, won't, I won't name you so your parents don't get angry, um, but uh, Karl Marx is going to say, before we started farming, before we became civilized, uh, we were much more civilized. We took care of one another, uh, and uh, and that's just kind of how it goes. Um, uh, John uh, Locke, 
in period five. It's going to say the same thing. In a state of nature, we took care of one another. Um, so this class starts in 8000 BCE, just the hop, skip, and a jump back to uh, 10,000 years ago when we start farming. First farming, uh, it's wheat and barley in the Middle East. Um, then we get rice in China, yams in Africa, and maize in America. Um, difference between yams and sweet potatoes? I don't know. <laughs> My wife makes me eat sweet potatoes, I think. She, she baked it into this thing, and it was... And yams, sweet potatoes are good, I'm getting over here, but I'm getting also conflicting information. Yams are, they're different. So you're saying they're different. Okay. I started this lesson thinking they were the same, and I was just making a joke about them being different. But now I am truly conflicted. Um, oh, oh, I know a trick. I know a YouTube trick. Um, so what do you think? Are yams or uh, sweet potatoes, are they the same thing? Uh, tell me in the comments, and I'll pick one of you lucky subscribers uh, to uh, reply to you and say, good job. Uh, who knows? Um, also, they have rice in China. Wait, paleo, paleolithic there is no such thing as a paleolithic revolution. I do not know where you're getting your information, ma'am. So there are, uh, so the paleolithic, the paleolithic era, the paleolithic era should not be on the AP exam. Um, unless it's talking about, you can talk about the Neolithic era and need to know some information about the Paleolithic era. Um, but no, this, if you're, if you're cramming for the examining, um, this might not be something you would focus on that much. Even this video, why are you even watching this? Uh, jump straight to like unit four or something. Okay. Um, but, uh, uh, seriously, it, no, it, sh it shouldn't be a big thing. Uh, you notice I didn't do the Big Bang. Uh, we didn't talk about the formation of the Earth. We didn't talk about evolution, mainly not to offend some of my more uh, conservative friends. Uh, and uh, I'm kidding. They get offended anyway. Uh, also, the liberals do too. What, what's worse, a liberal or a conservative? Trick question, both. Uh, uh, so here we go. Farming. Farming brings a surplus of food, a, a abundance, and what happens is we need to protect the food. Uh, we need to protect the stuff. I've got nice stuff now. I traded food for nice shiny thing. I'll kill you for nice shiny thing. Now there's war. I'll build a building. Um, all these things start to come out of uh, the Neolithic Revolution, and the the... The statement I have here is, if your food and security, if your food and security are taken care of, your culture is going to flourish. Okay, problem with the packet? It does. The packet does say study a lot. I'm trying to help. Thank you. Um, some of my students are way too excited for for 4:33 p.m. Um, and, uh, yeah, oh, I noticed I went back. Make the screen wide up there, I think. There we go. All right, so uh, if your food and security are taken care of, your culture will flourish. Uh, and that's why uh, most historians will say the most important event in, uh, in world history is the thing that created world history. It's the thing that led to people starting to write things down. Uh, that's the difference between history and prehistory. Uh, and it's the Neolithic Revolution. We systematically and fundamentally changed the way that we live. Uh, the second most important event in uh, world history, does anybody remember? The Industrial Revolution. That's right. Good job, student. Um, it is the Industrial Revolution, and we see um, changes not as, uh, not as, entirely transformative, but still transformative uh, to the point where, you know, we're still kind of training you to be in a factory right now in this education system, which is kind of strange. Um, so 
It's true. Um, so uh, domestication, uh, remember that to domesticate someone or something means to make it appropriate for the house, to bring it, it really means bring it inside the house. Uh, but we don't bring lambs, goats, and cows in the house all the time. I mean, this is Appalachia. Uh, I don't even know what that means. Um, so, uh, but it means to tame is a better word for domesticate. Um, and so domesticated animals are going to start in the Middle East. Um, we're going to start with lambs and goats, move up to cows. Uh, ooh, hello. Oh, it's Val. Um, she's asking for me to put the Green Revolution DBQ up, and I will. Um, hey, Val, if you're on YouTube Live, I'm, um, I'm not on YouTube Live, so it's okay. Um, <laughs> over, <laughs> I would watch Val's YouTube Live channel. Would you not? Yeah. Uh, she just throw stuff all the time. Um, oh, she'll be in the Olympics in like what three years, and then people can go back and be like, "Oh, wait, well, you see this long lost footage of Valerie Kendrick, uh, teacher, uh, not uh, oh, and Valerie Kendrick not showing up to an AP review session." Okay, so have you heard of llamas? I have, uh, and um, so so llamas um, are the only um, are the uh, only large domesticated animal in the Americas, and um, and uh, they're the they they are not truly beast of burden um, in the same way that uh, ox or uh, or horses or mules or all those other things are over in Afro Eurasia. I have a question. So what's the difference between an alpaca and a llama? I feel like that's I feel like that's a uh, set up for a really bad joke. So, the alpaca... Okay, so... <laughs> uh, between an alpaca and a llama, I do know. You can make sausage out of either, actually. Um, you can also make sausage out of people. Um, so, here's the thing. The truth is, uh, alpaca, the alpacas and llamas are both uh, raised for uh, their their um, wool. Um, alpacas are used as sort of, or, or sorry, uh, llamas are used sort of as pack animals in that you could uh, throw things over their back and walk them, uh, sort of in the same way um, uh, you would you know, they carry it for you, but you don't ride a llama, don't try, okay? Um, but that's what they were used for. Um, alpacas were actually, they were raised for wool and also meat. Uh, and so that's the difference. Uh, llamas are taller and thinner and stupider. Uh, no, sorry. Yes. And alpacas are shorter and fatter and tastier. <laughs> Uh, those are called camels. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, so the thing is, uh, the, the, the interesting thing is that alpacas and llamas are in the same uh, family as uh, camels. Um, what's that? And they are similar. They look similar. Can we get back on topic? I agree with that. Um, so... Lots of things lead to the development of the Americas being different than the development of uh, Afro-Eurasia. Uh, one of the things is it's harder for plants and animals to live in different uh, parts of the Americas because it has a north-south orientation, whereas uh, in um, Afro-Eurasia, it's an east-west orientation. And you know as you change your latitude, as you move further away or closer to uh, the equator, um, temperature and climate changes a whole lot more than when you change your longitude. So, for example, you can probably grow a lot of uh, the same crops in, um, in Virginia as you can in Missouri, um, but you probably can't grow a lot of the same crops that you can grow in Michigan uh, in Florida and vice versa. Um, and so that's one thing. Um, another thing is um, the question of Columbian exchange here is, um, you know, there are no, uh, there, there aren't these big 
animals until the Spanish uh, and the other Europeans show up. So, yes, there were wild horses uh, way, 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 way back. They were hunted to extinction, uh, and they were like in the plains. Uh, but this is uh, before your way before Europeans came. Okay, um, and so uh, it's important to see that uh, civilizations are going to develop independently. There's not going to be a lot of interaction. Um, so if we go through the course, we'll see that uh, there's very little interaction here. We really have to dig for it to see that Mesopotamia and Egypt interacted. Uh, bless you. And then in Unit 2, we'll see some, we'll see some uh, trans-regional interaction. For example, on the Silk Roads, uh, China sort of interacted with Rome, right? Um, and, um, and we'll see a little bit on, uh, we won't see the Sand Roads yet. Yeah, we will in Unit 2. 200 is the camel saddle. Um, but in Unit 3, with the rise of Islam... Uh, the rise of the Byzantine Empire and the rise of the Mongols, we're going to see widespread interregional trade and uh, and contact. Unit five, we will connect both worlds, old world and new world. Oh, I skipped unit four. Uh, unit four will connect both worlds. Unit five will give it to the Europeans. I take that back. The Europeans will take it by force. Uh, and then in Unit 6, we'll become global. Um, and that's kind of the, uh, the interaction, okay? Um, two examples of agricultural settlements that we do not really call civilizations. Uh, it's some, uh, I think Strayer calls them stepping stone civilization or, yeah, uh, or agricultural settlements. Jericho, which is in Israel, uh, which is also in the Bible, uh, and Karo Hilk. Uh, which is in Turkey, which may be in the Bible. There's not a famous story about the walls around Cattle Hook. However, there are some cool pictures at the end of Strayer, uh, uh, one of the chapters where if you die, they just bury you in your house, uh, and then they run across the tops of the roofs, uh, and there's no doors on the ground. It's like Assassin's Creed or something. So that's really fun. Um, so what's a civilization? Um, you got to have a food surplus. Um, and specialization of jobs. What that means is um, you have a job other than get the food. Okay, you have a mealer uh, who meals the, uh, uh, what am I looking for? Like you make flour, right? Um, you'll have a shoemaker and a blacksmith and a, uh, all this stuff. Uh, you got to write. Uh, writing is good, writing and reading and arithmetic. Um, uh, you'll have some form of art, um, some form of trade. Uh, this is a word that not everybody knows, but they should. It's called stratification. To stratify means to separate. Um, and here we're talking about social stratification. Um, this is uh, the idea that, you know, in the Paleolithic world, in the pre-civilization world, we're all equal. Um, women hunt, sorry, men hunt, women gather. Uh, there's more research that's coming around that's saying, you know, that was probably equally distributed as well. Um, there's no, there's not a lot of ranks in the Paleolithic world. Um, now, we see transitions into this as people start, as, as men start to organize hunts and being a better hunter uh, gave you some kind of status and that leads to stratification. Your family has a higher status and we start to see things like that. Uh, but it really doesn't come along until we uh, move into nom nomadism, um, well, a better word is pastoralism um, and agriculturalism. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and so stratification is this group of people is better than that group of people and so on. Uh, and probably the best example of that, even way back in Unit 1, um, is Hinduism and the caste system that we'll talk about in uh, greater detail as we move on. Uh, you got to get an army. you got to get, the next thing should say, leggy. 
Ah, oh, this is new technology. Army, leggy, get it? Home run, Brock. Um, so <laughs> the students are legitimately embarrassed for me right now. Bless your heart. Um, new technology and innovation um, are the big things. So just like me in high school, metal is a really big part of this time. Uh, I'm just way into uh, death metal, black metal, grindcore, uh, slash thrash, that kind of stuff. Metal. Very important. Um, and, uh, oh, by the way, Neolithic means new stones. And uh, did I tell you guys what, new, what the new stones were? Metal. Metal is new stone. Isn't that weird? It's hard and in the ground like a stone, but it's shiny. Um, and, uh, and the old stone was stones. Uh, and so there you go. Um, some important uh, metal to think about uh, in this time period would be Iron Maiden, uh, Slayer, Kiss, uh, some people call them metal, uh, Metallica. Um, these, I don't know, Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> Is he metal? Oh, is that the new Kindred? Okay. Um, bronze. Uh, bronze is the first metal that's really used in, uh, in widespread, um, and it's around 3,000 BCE. 3,000 years before Jesus, there was widespread use of metal. Um, we start to see iron um, about 1,300 years before Jesus. The Lidots. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, the Lydian, that's coming. Yep. Uh, the Lydians, uh, they coin money. Yep. Uh, so uh, major themes in this uh, uh, time period is uh, how, we in, how we altered the environment. And the biggest way that we did that is irrigation. Um, so as we're looking at how, um, how these like egalitarian, which is a fancy word for equal, as we're looking at how these egalitarian societies end up being this, these hierarchies, these stratified hierarchies of, you know, chief and his family, and then the advisors and, and their family, and how we, um, we start to relegate uh, women to the home and men to the public sphere. Um, when we start to see all this start to happen, um, one of the ways uh, I mentioned earlier were the men who were leading the hunting expeditions, uh, getting higher status. Uh, we also uh, see that men who are leading large-scale irrigation uh, projects are going to, as they're organizing that kind of stuff, uh, are going to um, get a higher status because they are leading. Uh, hey, I've got front row seats for you three back row people. Come on up. Excellent. Who's the fourth? Oh, there's still four seats. Yeah, there's four. Come on. There's an extra one. You can stretch out. Um, so we see a lot of trade. Uh, we see um, cultural interactions. Uh, and all this comes uh, from, uh, I didn't even see you. Uh, Toby was hiding you. Uh, I don't blame you. Ah, oh, now you're so close. I can, I can hear your minds be melting by knowledge. Uh, um, women's status are going to uh, decline as society moves forward. If you're a woman, you may feel like society is moving backwards until we get. Uh, we'll see some different flashes in the pan of feminism as time goes on. Uh, but it's really uh, the 1900s and even into the 2000s that we really start to see real progress. Um, so uh, that's our intro video. Uh, we can talk about uh, the River Valley civilizations, uh, Mesopotamia uh, and, and Egypt. Uh, I am not going to talk about how they saw flooding and, and where that is. We talked about that in depth. Um, I will mention cuneiform or cuneiform. Uh, depending on how your teacher says it, they're right. Um, <laughs> and um, the Epic of Gilgamesh. Cuneiform is the earliest form of writing. It, cuna means wedge. 
form means shaped, wedge shaped, uh, and they use that for accounting. Um, I think a pretty major thing to know is that the first writing came for accounting. Okay, um, another pretty major thing to know is that the first war probably was over stuff. Um, and so um, these, this, uh, a, good, a good phrase is accumulation of wealth. The accumulation of wealth that happens because of civilization is going to cause a lot of problems. Um, so in uh, uh, some, some advancements that come out of Sumer, uh, and Mesopotamia, well, Sumer specifically, uh, the wheel, uh, that's kind of important. Uh, the, you ever thought about how it's kind of weird that they, we base minutes and hours and seconds on 60? That's strange, right? Uh, it comes all the way back from when they only had 60 numbers. I'm joking. Um, so, but, but it does come back all the way back from the Sumerians, the, the 60 base number system, uh, which who knows? Um, so uh, the Babylonians uh, start to take over, uh, and they kind of sweep through. Uh, remember that my, my basic history of Mesopotamia is, uh, if you can picture here on the screen, here is Mesopotamia, okay? And then eventually these guys come and sweep through and take over, and now they're in charge. And, oh, no, here comes those guys, and now they're in charge. And who are we today? I don't know. We are Hittites. Nah. And that's kind of the through and through and through until we get to the Assyrians who make this big, huge thing. Um, so the Babylonians are going to take over. They make some gardens that are hanging. Uh, they're kind of a big deal. There's this guy named, uh, he's named after a sandwich, a ham sandwich, Hammurabi. And... Um, uh, the code of Hammurabi is going to be on an AP exam, I promise. If it's not on the one this year, then uh, it's going to be on the one next year. It's just probably, uh, there's not many documents to choose from in Unit 1, and the code of Hammurabi is probably the most famous one from this time period. Things you should know is that it says if you are a lower class, you get harsher punishments. Seems legit. Uh, it's super strict. This is the eye for, the, eye for an eye. Um, and... Uh, I don't, isn't this the one where it's like if the guy cheats on the woman, like he's got to give her like $2, but if the woman cheats on the man, she got to drown herself or something fun like that. It's a good time. Um, a great time was had by all. Um, and um, uh, real quick, uh, Eye for an Eye um, shows up uh, twice more uh, in world history. Um, for example, uh, somebody told uh, your boy Jesus, hey, uh, what do you think about all this eye for an eye stuff uh, in the Old Testament? And the uh, Code of Hammurabi says, and Jesus is like, oh, if somebody hits you in the eye, uh, you should just um, offer, uh, turn the other cheek and let him hit you in the other eye. Uh, so this is Jesus. Uh, that's really turn the other cheek. That's what it means. Um, and then uh, Gandhi um, in the uh, 1900s said uh, uh, an eye for an eye only makes the whole uh, world go blind. Um, but I'm getting weird looks about the Jesus thing. And uh, when I was in uh, when I was in high school, and I heard the "turn the other cheek" uh, thing that's from the Bible. Everybody's heard that, right? You heathens. Uh, and uh, so, uh, uh, so when uh, when I first heard that, I thought that Jesus was saying, if someone hits you in the cheek, that you should turn and walk away and don't, you know, just leave them alone. Don't, uh, don't, re don't retaliate. But what Jesus is actually saying is offer him the other one. Oh, that's a preacher's dog. So maybe, maybe in different churches they have different interpretations of it. I'm pretty sure everyone has the Bible differently. Exactly. Do not get back at does the Bible say but, that? But, but to, but that do, it does mean to not retaliate. But <laughs> it also means there's a thing that says offer him the other. It's very interesting. Um, let's go to the King James Version. <laughs> okay. King James Version. BibleStudyTools.com. Uh, turn the other cheek.
And this was authorized by King James I. Matthew. Um, so this is King James Bible. It says, Matthew 539, But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, right cheek turn to him the other also. And we can compare that to some other versions. Um, uh, we've got, um, that's pretty much the same thing. But to him who gives you a blow on the right side of your face, let the left be turned. Is it turned away or turned towards? Uh, here, the Common English Bible, um, if people slap you on your right cheek, you must turn the left cheek to them as well. Um, a Jewish Bible, I don't know what the Jewish Bible is writing about. They don't even, that's not really what they're into. Um, so, uh, I guess, blue, what, what is our official Bible? Blue letter? I don't even, never heard of that. King James is like the, oh, I see, I see. Um, that's very cool. I think where we are is at an idea of turning that cheek. Is it turning towards the person and saying, hit me again? Or is it turning away and leaving? Um, no, no. Jesus is all about not hitting. I'm way down. Well, I think the point of it is not what you would do. It's not what you would do. It's what Jesus would do, right? Okay. Uh, I so Jesus is. All right, so here's the deal. Uh, Mesopotamia, polytheistic, as we saw earlier on the practice test. Uh, the government is not centralized. We agree with that. It's kind of all over the place, kind of dipping dots. Uh, Kentucky proud dipping dots. Uh, <laughs> Kodaham Ravi. Okay, um, so the Hittites. The way I remember Hittites is you hit people with your iron sword. Hit Hittites. I don't know, that's all I got. Um, we see a lot of diffusion of iron uh, coming through uh, Mesopotamia. And if I could probably make sure kids know like four words before uh, the AP exam, one of them would probably be diffusion, which is um, the spread of, a, of an idea from one culture to another. Um, so AP is not going to make you know all of these different cultures and small empires and groups uh, in Mesopotamia. Uh, but seeing them and knowing what they are, sometimes you'll see the Acadians with two Ks. Uh, that's just too racist for me. I go for the one C instead. Two Ks, we get one more, one more K, and I'm very nervous. Um, uh, and the thing about the Persians is sort of like the last big uh, Persian, imp uh, the last big Mesopotamian empire that carries over uh, into Unit Two is the Persians. And you probably remember the Persians running alongside the Greeks. Okay, so um, we got uh, a little bit uh, into uh, Unit 1. Um, and uh, the, the rest of the stuff is uh, China, which is very cool. Um, and uh, I'll pull that up on the screen and flip through it for you just in case you don't have the PowerPoints. Uh, and it's all good in the hood. Uh, Catch you on the flip side on the uh, Mr. Brock uh, .net and uh, the YouTube. So just go ahead and pause on these screens. Okay, there's all the good stuff. Uh, have fun in your studying. Good luck on the AP exam. Smash that dislike button and goodbye.